I, I, I really didn't want to be didactic. I, I, as a kid, I, I didn't like didactic books, you know, um, I wanted to be, I, when I, as a reader, I want to be so invested in the story that I forget that I'm reading and, um, it's hard to write a book like that, um, like intentionally, because how do you do it? How do you know if, how do you know if you're succeeding? Um, I don't know. I mean, I suppose even if you win every award there ever is and uh, you make all the money, you still don't really know. It, would be, that would be good indicators, though. <laughs> sure. well, I, I, would, that I wouldn't way. mind those indicators. <laughs> I like indicators that was like very that. welcome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've just met too many uh, authors who, who I would think um, have every reason to think, yes, it's all happened for me. I'm the best. There can't be any better than this. And they don't feel that way. There's, there's still some voice in the back of their head. And I think that's probably a good thing. Because mm -hmm. the moment you start thinking I am the best, you're you're about to stop being the best. Right. Right. I think that um and I think that that's something that writers really that you know unpublished writers um should know, right? That like once you get the agent, you're not on easy street. Once you get the book sale, you're not on easy street. You know, like once you win the whatever award, you're not on easy street because, because ultimately what happens is then you have to write the next thing. And what do you have when you write the next thing? A blank screen or a blank piece of paper. And then you have to go back to that, the beginning of like creating something out of nothing. So it's, it, um, I think being a writer can be humbling in a way. And I think that like, when you allow yourself to be humbled by it, <laughs> you're probably in a better place than being like, you know, I got this. Um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I don't know. I, I always say if the two writers tell me we always approach every problem this way and we always do things this way and we're always successful, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. But the problem, the problem with that is that it, that it doesn't, that the same things don't work for everyone. You know, like, like the advice you have to write every day in order to stay in it. You have to write every day. You know what? I don't write every day. I'm a weekend warrior. I can't write every day. Um, it's just not, I can't, um, I can't immerse myself for like an hour in the morning. I need like hours because it takes me a while to like really get in it. Um, so like when I'm really writing, um, in the midst of really writing something, um, I'm writing Saturday and Sunday. And, you know, if it's summertime <laughs> on Fridays too, um, because publishing Fridays, you know. <laughs> so, so, I mean, what's, that, what's, a, what's a good writing day look like for you? Oh gosh, um, lots of coffee. Um, <laughs> It's always better if it's not nice out, um, so I don't get distracted. Um, and uh, if I'm just like home, if I could get in a couple of hours and then take a break and then get in another couple of hours, um, I couldn't tell you word counts because sometimes it would be like, you know, two, 3,000 and sometimes it'll be like 567. You know, I'm, I don't, I'm not a fast drafter. I, I, I think a lot while I'm writing. Um, and I also kind of like, um, like research things. I'm like constantly looking things up while I'm writing. And I, I do get distracted, but it, I think it also really informs my, I think it gives a richness to my writing that wouldn't otherwise be there. Um, details of things, you know, um, a name of a plant, you know, a, a, a bird or a color, what's the right word for the color I'm thinking of, you know? So I don't, so I'm not a fast drafter. Um, so what is a, a good, a good writing day is, um, is that I set out to, that I, I don't know, I don't, I couldn't even tell you that like at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, that's not so bad. 
<laughs> that's about that's about as like as good as the as it gets you. That's not so bad. <laughs> I rarely say I nailed it, you know, but I, like that's not so bad. <clears throat> and then um, going on retreats is really. I wrote a lot of this book um, on retreats. Um, I would go to the Highlights Foundation in uh, Pennsylvania, and I got I wrote a lot of this book there. Um, and when I wasn't there, I, I did Airbnb with a writing buddy a few times. Um, because then it's, it's like, you know, let's have breakfast and then we're going to write, let's have lunch and then we're going to write, let's have dinner. And then we're going to write, um, and, you know, maybe like read to each other and just like, um, having the time away from my regular life really, really helps me because, you know, as an agent, I've got so many stories swirling around in my head um, from uh, people who are submitting things to me. So I'm reading queries, I'm reading manuscripts. I've got my clients stuff that they're sending to me. Um, I've got uh, that I'm reading and then manuscripts that I'm critiquing for them and giving, you know, like giving them feedback on. So I have all of that happening and then I'm supposed to be creating something out of nothing, right? So it's kind of like um, separating myself from all of that and just saying, okay, I'm just being a writer at this place during these hours um, is really, really helpful for me. 